18 years old, just graduated high school. I was working at a metal shop eight hours a day, grinding metal, coming home with metal chips in my eyes and stuff, you know. I was just grungy. I was riding the ramp during my lunch break. I would go, during lunch, I would go and ride the ramp with work boots on and the work uniform, you know, for lunch. first show I actually seen was uh, we rode like 30 miles down to Chula Vista from Santee. We rode all the way down there, it took us like two or three hours and seen the Haro show as Tony Murray and uh, I don't remember who the other people were but just Tony Murray stands out so strong in my mind because his first trick, one hand one foot invert on an eight foot quarter pipe and I was just so amazed and I'll never forget that, you know, it's just, from then on it was on. Dave used to come to my house and bust wheels, that's, that's about it. Get air, bottom out. Every time he'd come over, he'd break something. So we're out at the beach one day and he gets a flat tire. And uh, I'm thinking, man, how are we gonna find a ride home? No one will drive us home. So uh, he just says, no big deal. I just ride a wheelie all the way home. And everyone, nah, come on, you, you're gonna ruin your tire. And that was back before anyone was sponsored, so. A tire made a big deal, that was a good 10, 12 bucks, even back then. And uh, we just took off riding, and he was riding wheelie. And that guy made it all the way back to Santee, up and over Mission Gorge, which is about a two mile uphill, and a good, a good mile steep downhill. And he set his wheel down maybe once. And from, from Mission Beach, he probably set it down somewhere on Friars Road, which is about five miles in. And I don't think he sat down again until he was in Santee. That's a good 20 miles. I used to do a lot of uh, school shows and fair shows. I needed a rider to do ramps because all I did was ground. I called up Dave and I had him come down and, and do the show with me. And uh, boy was he in for a surprise. Do you want to see more? Yeah! Well, you're gonna get your chance to ask for more because this next song is Rebel Yell by Billy Idol. And when Billy starts singing, she cries more, more, more. Then I want you to cry out for more. And whoever I see crying out for more the loudest is gonna get one of these posters. Who wants a poster? Brian Scott shows were uh, a good start, I guess is what I can say. I wanna be a freestyler, doing all the hot tricks. I want to be a freestyler And you could be my chick <laughs> When Dave first saw what we were going to do, he's like, you're joking, right? He said, you're not going to make me do this stuff. It was uh, 
a lot better than working at a metal shop, that's for sure. And I got to be in front of people and show off, and that's what I like to do, so it was cool. I think that riding back in the 80s was uh, a lot more relaxed. Everybody was kind of a tight family, you know. It was uh, not so serious, you know. Nowadays, everybody's training and everything. And back then, we were just trying to, to expand the sport. We were just trying to learn new tricks and to help each other out on uh, learning something new, you know. Hey, maybe if you try this or that, you know. Now it's kind of a secret. You don't want anyone to know what's going on. And, uh, it seemed like a lot more fun back then, but I mean, it's different strokes for different folks, I guess. I don't know. Yeah! He was always doing 540s higher than even he knew he can do. He was just going for it, man. He always crash or win was his style, and uh, he won an awful lot. First place for winning the world championships, I think back then was like 400 bucks or 500 bucks. Nowadays, it's you know 15 or 20,000 for first place plus a win match, I mean, and, and in future endorsements. So back then we rode bikes and knew that we'd all have to get jobs when we were done. But nowadays, uh, you know, there's some guys that are gonna be able to ride for maybe five, six years and retire, which is pretty amazing. In 1989, I made this BMX superhero video called Agro Man. Whoever put on the aggro necklace would uh, turn into this BMX superhero guy. Dave was uh, the first guy who got to wear the aggro man suit. Back in the early 90s, the neon thing was pretty strong. Uh, nobody really seemed to care too much about being hardcore and looking a certain way, you know. I mean, it wasn't important to everybody. It was just like, let's just ride, you know. It wasn't such a big soap opera scene if this guy wore a neon shirt or whatever, you know. Things started to change a little bit later in the 90s, and then in the 90s, it started getting hardcore, and guys were laughing at us for doing shows with jerseys on and stuff. Ah, oh, look at you guys, oh, factory, yeah, hardcore, oh, you guys are great. Now, those guys are out wearing jerseys and stuff, you know, they're just full on selling out, but, you know, they, they made fun of us, and we, we don't go around making fun of them now that they're wearing neon or jerseys or whatever, you know. Back in the day, um, in the early days of street riding, it was different than it is now because you could really innovate and you could really you could invent tricks really easily because nobody had done anything yet. No matter how hard we tried, Volker would still win if he was there because, um, like today, Volker doesn't really concentrate on tricks, but he concentrates on flying from one side of the street course to the next.
tour pretty much consists of driving in the van, riding in bad parking lots, and hanging out in hotels. Uh, I think Dave's pretty good at all those. I ride around, pretty much get my mind set on what I'm going to be doing. And then I uh, try to figure out the right speed as I'm heading towards the ramp. I have no pads on, so I'm probably in a very... Oh! Quit that ad lib stuff. Ah! Yeah! Yeah! What the... <laughs> Summer Tour 96. I get along with the kids by uh, trying to see the way they're looking at us through their eyes. What's making them entertained and being cool to them is part of our job and it, it's what I like to do. It's like sometimes the riders will get frustrated and it's like, hey look, you know, I mean this is fun really. If you think about it, we're out having fun and these kids are stuck. They're just totally stuck. I got into golf about 91 or 92, somewhere like that. Joe Johnson took me out to a little course and it just hooked me. I'm totally addicted to it now. It's super hard and it messes with your mind and I like that. GT gave me a mountain bike and uh, me and my wife were out riding bikes one day and I was just going down this hill. You know, I left the wife behind. I just started blazing down the hill into the harder gear, so lift up into a manual doing about 30, 35 maybe. And these kids were playing out in the middle of the street, you know, and I'm like yelling up ahead, hey, lay down and don't move. <laughs> lay down, don't move. Oh, okay, so they laid down side by side and I I launched over him in the middle of the manual, and as soon as I landed, the handlebar snap, bam, over the bars, tumbling, tumbling, all clumps of hair everywhere. My wife's coming up, she's freaking out. The kids are over there just rolling, <laughs> they're just laughing. Ah! <laughs> I rode home with the handlebar in my hand and blood everywhere, <laughs> elbows and knees. It was a pretty cool experience for them, I'm sure. First job was slinging fish in the cannery, and Dave likes fish. I got two kids now, my wife, and we got a little house. We bought like some old toys and stuff. We're living life. Volkers owned a four by probably as long as I knew him. 
The kids are incredible. It's just unbelievable every morning waking up to a smiling little face, you know, stoked. I first met him, he was an okay rider, average rider. Started working with him a little bit. Not really working with him, but just suggesting things like uh, the important thing is to go high, higher than anyone, and you'll stand out a lot more. Within a year, he just totally, totally improved, 100%, and it was unbelievable. tour, get up in the morning and he has some funny old school song whistling in the shower when he gets dressed. When he wakes up to the minute we leave the hotel room, he's whistling a tune. Some old 80s rock, I don't know what, it, but it's, it's hilarious. Wakes up just whistling away. We need to do some sort of a how-to, it seems to be the cool thing to do. So I'm gonna try this. Um, it, it's an extremely difficult maneuver. Um, it's called the shooter. What you need is a piece of trash. You set it up right in the V of a curb. You're gonna come at it with speed. Hit it with the back part of your tire as you kick out, pinches it against the curb and shoots it up in the air. And that's why we call it a shooter. Extreme. I don't know what he would do if he didn't ride because he's got a, that part of him uh, just going for it. He's got a, I don't know what kind of job he can do where he can just show off like he does. He loves to go for it, he loves to show off, and I think that's what's helped make his career last so long. doing the wall ride one time I shot too far to the left and I was totally gonna overshoot the landing I was scared man I was totally panicking I grabbed the back brake and skidded on the wall enough to where it slowed me down and I dropped right onto the landing and when I landed I was just amazed man I was like wow I swear I just skidded up on the wall 
and I looked back up on there and there was about a foot long skid. I was so stoked, man. I just can't imagine riding on a wall and having enough traction to slow yourself down with the brake. Probably why I should have worn my shin guns. <laughs> Dang, look at the bone right there. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Comes out of his dressing room. Oh! No pizza boy, you want I should fly you? What do you got, a flat tie out there? Get that GT moving! Like I was saying, Mr. J, your pizza's in good hands. Our delivery boy's a professional. I don't think you understand. I'm famous. I want my pizza. Give me the pizza! Don't worry, Mr. Johnson. Our boy will be hitting your driveway any second now. There it is. That's right, Mr. Johnson. Nobody delivers like GT. Yummy, yummy.
not a street bike. Look, street. If the street environment is pure, it needs no moving and it needs no adjusting. We're towards the end of the show and it started raining and the ramps were wet and uh, we, I mean, we couldn't ride the ramps. There's no way, they're too slippery. And all of a sudden, he comes out of nowhere, pedaling as fast as he can, doesn't know how to flip over the box jump. I, I mean, I wouldn't go near that thing, it was so wet. 